everybody. Uh, thank you, Tony, for stepping up into uh, talking a bit about non-emerge. Okay, I'm from Paramedic Services Victoria. My name's Phil Siggs. Uh, we're one of those contractor uh, companies that work with AV, but we also do uh, contracts with some of our uh, hospitals around here. Now, uh, me personally, I come from a military background. I was actually a medic in the Royal Australian Army before I uh, left and became a non-emergency uh, ambulance attendant. Now, the transition for me into non-emerge was quite a big one, okay? Obviously, not as much yelling, not so many guns, but honestly, I can tell you now, it's been a very satisfa satisfying job for me, okay? I feel very satisfied. I come home, I'm no stress, Okay, I feel like I'm helping people. Now, along with that, you also feel very appreciated. Okay, most people do appreciate you in the non-emerge and also in the emerge field. Now, what is the non-emerge field? Okay, what do we do? We work under guidelines. They're set out by uh, the Department of Human Services. Okay, so you've got to differentiate what is an emerge patient and what is non-emerge. Okay, and these come through our protocols. So the protocols for an eMERGE patient, that's usually something involving trauma, maybe uh, chest pain, things like uh, respiratory distress. Okay, but the non-emerge patients, they usually fall within our protocols. So the guidelines, their blood pressure has to be, say, over 100 uh, diastolic. Their respirator has to be below 30. There are circumstances under which we can transport those patients and we usually work with a clinician with AV to uh, see what we can do. Now, as you see there, we've got three categories, low, medium, and high acuities, okay? The low acuity, they're usually straightforward patients that just need stretcher ambulances. And we also have walkers and uh, wheelchair ambulances. Medium acuity, okay, slightly more complex, usually your monitored patients. Uh, we also carry pen trains, so if a patient needs pain relief for, uh, say, back pain, something like that, uh, we can take them under a medium acuity. High acuity, we don't do quite as many high acuities. They usually involve uh, having a doctor or a nurse on board, but uh, some of the uh, non-emerged areas do have those high acuity cars. Okay, now this is probably what you want to know. What are the roles that you have in non-emergency? Okay, so this is prevalent to you guys as students. The uh, first one there, PTO, that's a patient transport officer, okay? Basically, it's a Cert three qualification. As a student, after your first year, you can pre pretty much get that Cert three just recognised, okay? And that's usually just the low acuity stuff. But uh, the ambulance attendant, that's the next level up. That's the uh, diploma level. As a second year student, or at the end of your second year, you can qualify as an ambulance attendant uh, we like to see that you've had 400 hours, and that's uh, uh, clinical hours, and that can be included in your placement hours. So if you can have evidence that you've had 400 hours worth of placement in your second year, um, some of the providers will employ you as an ambulance attendant. Okay, the other roles that we have, okay, ambulance officers, some of the non-emerge uh, providers have ambulance officers, uh, Div 1 RNs, prick care nurses, Okay, even doctors. You can also become a clinical instructor within the non-emerge field. Okay, I'm a clinical instructor at PSV and that's just helping people getting, uh, at the end of their diploma, getting up to that ACA qualification. Now, the providers. PSV, Paris Service Victoria, we're only one provider, there's plenty around Victoria, uh, metropolitan, regional. Okay, as I said, they do work a lot with hospitals under their contracts, and we do work with AV, okay? Uh, we get clinician work. As long as it's deemed within our protocols, we can uh, pretty much take those patients. Now, some of the providers do do specialist work, okay? I've put a few there, bariatric uh, vehicles, okay? You might have seen them out there. They work with, uh, with AV. We also have some private bariatric vehicles. Uh, we also, uh, some of the companies, 
provide services for the horse racing. So if you ever go to the races, you see an ambulance chasing the horses around. Okay, that's uh, one of the private uh, paramedics, uh, one of the private non-emerge services. Okay. Firstly, other things I've seen when I was in the army at, at Pakapanyal, uh, we didn't have enough medics to go out with the tanks and the artillery. We actually used to outsource to a non-emerge company. So they used to come out bush and uh, sleep out field, eat ration packs. Okay, one thing about them though, they got a lot paid a lot more than what the army guys got. So they had a pretty good gig. Now another very satisfying job that I did whilst at PSV, uh, if you recall uh, the young lady Claire Oliver, now she died a few years ago as a result of melanoma caused by uh, the tanning salons. Okay, now just before she passed away, uh, she had a birthday party at, uh, at Luna Park. It was my privilege to transport her from Peter Mac, escort her all day at Luna Park. Okay, I stayed with her and then transported her back to uh, back to Peter Mac. Now that was a very satisfying job for me and, and the person I was working with that day. So there's a lot of good stories in non-emerge. Okay, and it can be very satisfying. Now, finally, there's a website there. Okay. This will show you the different protocols, the different setups for non-emerge. They also show you the different providers, okay? And if you have any questions about non-emerge, I'll be sticking around afterwards, and uh, feel free to ask me about that, okay? So thanks very much for having me. Have a good